Alrighty, so in, this is going to be the first video in the series of short videos I'm going to make about forces and motion. This one is just about forces and nothing else. So we're going to start off by um, trying to get a feel for what we already know about my forces and, and activate those uh, memories that we already have about them. So there are three questions that I want you to have a think about, and it would be um, a good idea to um, pause and write these down on a bit of scrap paper if you've got one or on a computer screen or something like that. So the three, three questions I want you to think about are what do you currently think a force is? How would you describe what a force is to someone else maybe? Um, what do you think a thought force does? And what kinds of force have you already heard of? So pause the video now, maybe scribble those down on a piece of scrap paper so you've got your starting point here. And then we'll pick up from there. All right, so um, now that we've done that, one thing I'd like to flag up is that um, as we go through this video, there are certain things that I think it's really important that we make a note of, because those are things that we are going to have to um, commit to our long-term memory, and I'll show you how we can go about doing that later on. But if you see something in purple, what I'd like to do is um, get some paper where you're going to make your notes or um, open up a document where you're going to keep your notes and make a note of them as we go through and pause the video if you need to get yourself extra time to do that. Okay, so let's get started with forces. So let's talk about that first question. It said, what is a force? Now, um, I'm going to respond to that in a quite an annoying way, and I'm actually going to tell you that as physicists, we don't really care. Um, and what I mean by that is it's not actually important in terms of modeling how the universe works, what a force is. So consequently, as physicists, we therefore don't bother thinking about it. It's not a good use of time. Um, that's not to say it's not an interesting thing to discuss, but that's more of in the realm of philosophy. If you want to discuss what energy is or what force is, that's the avenue you should go down. That's not really physics. Um, so because it doesn't matter, as physicists, we don't spend time asking. We just go, that's fine. Um, what we will do is we can describe what a force does. So we've, we've created a role in physics for a force. And we can also describe the scenarios where different types of forces act. So we can describe a scenario where an electric force acts or where a gravitational force will act or a normal contact force. So, and there are different scenarios for each of the different types of forces that we have um, essentially described. So that's our first thing. Uh, we don't bother saying what a force is, um, but feel free to enjoy discussing that in philosophy. Let's move on to our second question then about what a force does. So this is the first thing I think it's useful for us to note down. Um, what we're going to describe first of all is what role forces play in physics. So any time that an object speed, direction, or shape, and I'll highlight or because it can be any of the three or several of them at the same time, or shape or size change, we say that has been caused by a force. So forces are essentially the thing that we are using to say why speed, direction, or shape has changed. So there are two significant things to know about that statement at this point. First one, if a force doesn't act, an object speed, direction, or shape or size cannot change. Okay, so that's a really important thing. So if we've got a scenario where there are no forces, these three things cannot change. It's not possible. And the other significant thing about this statement that we've got in purple is that speed, direction, and shape cannot be caused to change by a quantity other than a force. So a common error I see people making when they're trying to explain things is they will say um, the object speed has changed because its kinetic energy is transferred into something else. That's just, as a statement, doesn't make sense. Energy doesn't cause speed to change. Likewise, once we start learning about momentum, people say um, because of its momentum, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, momentum doesn't cause things to happen. In physics, the only thing that causes changes to occur is a force, and that's it. Okay, so that, that's what a force does. 
it causes speed, direction, or shape and size to change. And if a force isn't acting, those three things cannot change. All right. So let's um, move past this to talk about the other side of physics. So the thing we have to remember about physics is it's all based on experiment observations. We've done some tests, we've seen what the results are, and we've drawn conclusions. So the experimental observation that we notice. So once we've described all of the different forces that can act, um, we have observed that if, if those forces don't act, an object's speed, direction, or shape and size doesn't change. That's our experimental observation. And this is where Newton's first law comes from. So Newton's first law is basically a statement of what we've talked about so far. Um, it doesn't deal with shape and size changing, it just deals with motion. But Newton's first law says an object's speed and direction will remain constant while no force acts on that object. And so that's the second thing I'd like you to write down. So pause the video if you need to do that. OK, so a really important thing to point out here is that you can't prove that first Newton's first law is true or is correct. Just as in in science, you can't prove that anything is true. And that's a really important point. All we can say is that we haven't seen any experiments where it hasn't been obeyed yet. So we've not seen any contradictions to Newton's first law, at least not until we start delving into particle physics and quantum stuff. Then Newton's first law runs lots of issues. But on our scale as humans looking at objects interacting with one another, we have not seen a scenario where Newton's first law is violated. Therefore, we as scientists accept it because it's been tested so many times. But we can't prove it's true. There is nothing we can do that would ever prove that it's true. It's just that it, we've never found any evidence that it's wrong so far. Okay. So that's Newton's first law. Um, it's fairly simple, but it is always obeyed, which is why it's useful. Okay, so next we can actually add a little bit more in terms of actually saying not only that a force is acting, that we can actually say or describe which direction it is acting as well. So that comes from the different scenarios. So let's say we have an object and its direction changes, but not its speed. OK, so what we say in that scenario is the force has acted at 90 degrees to the object's motion. So this here shows you the object's motion. So you can see here this object is going to the right. So um, based on what we've said here, there's a there's a lot of different ways a force could act. So we could have a force acting that way. That's at 90 degrees to the motion. We could have a force acting that way. That's at 90 degrees of motion. We could have a force going into the page. That would be at 90 degrees. That one's harder to, um, I can't really draw that. And it could be coming out of the page. And that would be at 90 degrees. And actually, you, these forces would build up like in a full circle direction. So basically, there's lots of directions that are 90 degrees. But if the direction changes, but not the speed, the force must have acted in one of those directions. So essentially what that means is we couldn't say have had a force that way because that would have made the speed change as well as the uh, direction essentially is what we're saying here. OK, so let's move on to our next scenario. So we've got an object speed increases but direction doesn't change. So what we say is that the force has acted in the same direction as the object's motion. So in this case, there's actually only one direction it could act. We must have a force this way. That's the only way you can be in the same direction as the object's motion there. So that's how we describe the force in that scenario. And then there's one final one. If the object's speed decreases, but the direction doesn't change, we say the force has acted in the opposite direction. So essentially, the force is going to have acted over here. That's what we say makes the speed decrease, but the direction not change there. 
So again, we've, that's actually highly specific. So these two, we can be very specific about which way the force is acting. Um, this way just limits the forces to only acting in certain directions. Okay, so those are our rules about forces so far. So in future videos, we'll look at adding forces together in all sorts of different ways. Um, but that's enough of our, that's our basics about forces so far. So what we're going to do to finish off with is we're just going to address a few questions that we've met so far. Um, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and I'd like you to tell me what a force is and just that for now. OK, so I'm going to assume we've done that. So what we should have here, and let's make our box a little bit wider. Is, um, the our answer is, as physicists, we don't care because it doesn't matter. OK, and, and that's all we actually need there. We genuinely don't care what a force is. Interesting to discuss, but we don't really care. All right, second question I would like you to write an answer to is I'd like you to tell me what a force does. So pause the video now and have a go at articulating that. All right, so I'm going to assume you've done that. So in terms of force does, a force causes an object's speed, direction, or shape, size, um, It causes speed, direction, or shape or size to change, and it can cause multiple ones. So you can change the speed and direction, you can change the speed and the shape, you can change the speed, direction, shape, and size all simultaneously. Um, but that's what a force causes. It causes an object's speed, direction, shape, or size um, to change, and it can do that in a variety of different ways. Okay, so now we're going to go through some scenarios. Uh, and just describe the effect the fo this force will have on the object. So if a force acts, per so we've got three scenarios. So what I'd like you to do is, again, pause the video and write down what you think will happen to the object's speed and direction in each of these three cases. We're not going to be uh, too fussed about shape changes for this one here. So for these three ones, we've got three scenarios here. What effect will it have on the object's speed and direction? OK, so if a force acts perpendicular to an object's direction motion, the speed will be unchanged. Any statement here that says that the speed doesn't change, but the direction will change. That's the key we're looking for there. Um, if the force acts in the same direction as the direction of motion, the, uh, the, we can say more than just the speed changes will increase, but the Direction won't change there. And then final one in here, um, the speed will decrease. So we can be more detailed than just say the speed changes, um, but the, the direction won't change. Okay, so um, these are essentially our three scenarios that we've met so far. So final one that I want to talk about and um, to um, have a think to yourself. So an object is traveling through space at 20 meters per second. If no force is acting on it, what will the object do? All right, so now you had a chance to write down your answer to that. So um, the key thing to get it is the motion of the object, motion and the shape size of the object will be unchanged. That's basically um, our Newton's first law is telling us that about the motion. So if no force acts, the shape and speed, shape and size can't change, nor can the speed or direction. So what does that look like? Speed will stay the same forever. Uh, direction will stay the same forever. And then shape, size will stay the same. So uh, that's actually for us as humans who live in a world of friction and irresistance and stuff. That's really hard for us to wrap our head around. But if no force acts on something, it will keep doing what it was doing forever. 
if you want to change something about its motion or its shape or size, you need a force to make that happen. OK, so I just want to finish off here by showing you what my notes from this video would look like here and how I've designed them in a way to help me um, make this information long term memories. So um, first thing is um, the things in here you can see in purple are just the things during the video um, that I sort of indicated that you should write down or that we went through. So these are things that we should have here. And what you can see on the left hand side is me turning these notes into what's called retrieval cues. The idea being is that I should be able to cover up what I can see on the right hand side. So I've just got like a magazine here. So I, if I cover up my screen so I can't see the stuff in purple, those cues should help me remember what it says on the right hand side and actually drag it out of my brain, which is how we actually form long term memory. So I'm currently covering those up. So you can see the first one we've got its role and in brackets, I've got a C. So that's telling me a keyword that I need to have in there. And then I've also got uh, delta S, delta D or delta S slash S. So in physics, um, the delta symbol just means change. So whenever you see a delta, it means um, change. So what this is say, articulating is the role of forces in physics is they cause changes in speed, distance or shape and size. So based on those clues, I should be able to retrieve that information from my brain. They're just there to help me get the right information. So we've got Newton. Next one is Newton's first law. Um, the speed or direction of an object uh, will remain constant unless without a force or unless a force acts something along those lines. Then the Next one down, so we've got a change in direction. What does that mean about the force? Changing direction means the force is perpendicular. Um, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna add in there, so I'm looking for a, a P there, perpendicular. Um, so speed is increasing, what does that mean? Well, it means the force is in the same direction as the motion, so maybe I'll give myself an S. And then speed is decreasing um, that means that the force is in the opposite direction. So I'll give myself an O there as a clue of the key term that I'm trying to remember. So these cues give me the key terms I'm looking for and give me some structure to help me remember what we've met before. And then what I will do is I'll use these cues over time to constantly make myself retrieve this information. That's how we actually form long term memories. And when when we meet forces again in a later video, I will start off by giving these retrieval cues and we'll see how much of this we can actually remember.